Have you ever wondered why Rubik's Cube is the best cubers in the world to use? They can turn over 12 turns per second, and to handle these turns, each cuber creates cubes to their preference. That means choosing their favorite cube, using the right settings, and applying their preferred loops. In this video, I try 5 cubes that are literally used by the best cubers in the world right now. I'm gonna test them one by one and see what makes them special. Enjoy the video. Oh hey, I know what you're thinking. Yo Cupid, what a nice backpack you have. But this video is not about the backpack, it's about what's inside of the backpack. Wow, full of surprises. This video is about this cube, this cube, this cube, this cube, and this cube. This backpack, $40 is great. It's just perfect for bringing cubes around. So $40, cubicle.com, use discount code CUPED. But now we're looking at these five cubes and you may be wondering, why are we looking at five bags? Well, inside of the bags are cubes and not just normal cubes. These are cubes used by the best in the world. And, I, and I'm not kidding when I say that. It's about this guy and this guy and this guy. Anyways, cube number one. This cube is from Ah, uh, Timon Kolasinski. Timon Kolasinski, aka the world record holder, is a Polish cuber that is considered as one of the best cubers of the moment. He's mostly known for his insane solutions and creativity. And by the way, I witnessed his first sub-4 official solve live. So these cubes are set up with scrambles that they actually had in competitions. I do not know exactly what they are, but, but, but it's a nice touch. Um, yeah, let's do some first turns. Uh, yeah, they're all gonna be pretty slow out of the box. And the reason for the oh man, that was such a bad solve, don't judge me. The reason for that is because, you know, there's so many loops inside of these cubes that it needs a lot of breaking in before they are actually usable. I mean, or should I say solvable? I mean, or should I say solvable in a way which you get fast times on ready? <laughs> oh, I can't forget this. You obviously get the accessories with the cubes, but <sighs> sorry for that. The next cube is. Ah, uh, <laughs> Lou Garrett is currently ranked fourth in the world and recently also got his first official sub for single. He's mostly known for his fast turning and funny reactions. Whoa! I mean, the best logo obviously goes to this guy. It, it already feels so much more different than Timon's cube, but uh, anyways, let's go to the next one. I'm pretty sure this is Max's cube from the logo. This cube is used by Max Park. He tied the world record together with Timon and he's known for his insane amount of world records in all sorts of events. And he even has a Netflix documentary made about him. Oh man. I mean, first turns, I prefer this cube over all of them. First turns, that is. So, ah, oh, man, I have so many good cubes now. Let's go to the next one. This boy right here. We have Screwdriver. I'm not, I, I do not know why I'm giving a close up. Okay, 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 here we go. This. So this is an interesting one. So Tommy Cherry is not like known because of his three by three souls, but he actually is a blind solver. He's not just a blind solver, but the best blind solver in the world. He namely has seven world records under his name. Now blind souls are different from normal souls. So that's why I thought it was really interesting to see what kind of cube he uses. And he actually uses a pretty old cube. It's, it's much different from the rest, basically. This feels so interesting. And then the last cube of them all, Oh, I love the guy. This cube is used by Medi Hirodo Inaba. Inaba? He's a cuber from Hawaii that is known to be one of the best in the world. He once plus two out of the world record average and also got a 3.08 single during Nations Cup, which also would have been world record. And recently he became famous on Instagram. What a guy. Uh, okay, this scramble is really, really good. Oh man, like this pseudo pair right here. Sure. Oh, but we can do another pseudo pair right here, so that counts. This this, this was like the best idea ever. We have the best cubes of the best cubers, and I'm gonna test them all, and I'm gonna give my opinion about them, and, and I'm actually really excited. I'm going to do 100 souls on all cubes and compare my results and see what makes each cube unique. The first cube I tried was Maddie's GAN 12 and Maglev. It is the flagship GAN model from last year. The cube has maglev technology, which basically replaces springs by using repelling magnets. This reduces friction and creates a cube that is faster than traditional cubes. The cube also has your traditional magnets as well as core magnets. Maddie uses maglev setting 5, which is really tight, with compression number 3, which allows for your crazy corner cuts. This cube even has a UV coating, which should prevent stuff like this from happening. The loops he uses is the Angstrom Comma with DNM37, which makes the cube super smooth yet controllable with a unique feel different from your normal silicon loop. The first souls of the average will unavoidably be worse since the cube needs to break in a bit first. 
But since the cube is so fast, I didn't mind the slower feel so much of this cube, and I started off with a pretty decent average. By the way, on my preferred cube, the O cube, I would average just below 9 seconds, so if I can average sub 9 on any of these cubes, they're really really good for me. Now later, as the cube started breaking in, I realized right away that the cube became faster than what I'm used to, which resulted in worse time since I had a lot of problems trying to control the speed of the cube. You can clearly see what's happening on this curve right here. I started off decent, but then I got worse because of the speed of the cube, and finally it stabilized around the 9 second mark since I probably got more used to handling the cube. It was kind of a hit or miss because if I was able to handle the speed of the cube, I got amazing times. And I feel like if I would have done more souls, I would really really enjoy this cube. I ended up with a 9.22 average of 100, a best single of 6.96, a best average of 5 of 8.25, 10 souls below 8 seconds, which I consider to be good souls, and 24 souls above 10 seconds, which I consider to be bad souls. These are going to be the statistics I'm going to be comparing between the 5 cubes. The next cube we're testing is Tommy Cherry's Waylong GDS 3M, which is the most interesting cube since the cube was released in 2018 and has riches, which no cube currently has. The intention was to give the cube more grip. For example, it is very common for Mega Minxes to have some sort of riches, but it turned out that not many people thought it helped on a 3x3, so Moyu got rid of the riches in their next release. It has traditional corner edge magnets, which are pretty strong, and a normal dual adjustment system, which he has set to 3 clicks, which is fairly fast. This cube comes equipped with the same loops as Maddie's cube, which means the Angstrom duo with DNM37, but also Lubical Black Core loop, which is a very unique loop which should make the cube even faster. But the result is a cube that is in fact really really controllable and unique, especially since I'm used to all the new releases. Weighing 91 grams, it is definitely a step up from the GAN I tried before, and that combined with the ridges I haven't felt in forever, the cube kinda caught me off guard, resulting in some below average times. To show you guys just how long it took for me to get used to the cube, it took 31 souls for me to get my first sub 8 solve on this cube, which was a 6 second solve. And the more souls I did, the more I enjoyed the cube and the more I got used to it, which resulted in some pretty nice times. I even beat the average of 5 which I set on Maddie's cube with an 8.19 average of 5 and eventually ended up with a 9.27 average of 100. The best single of 6.57, 11 times below 8 seconds and 26 times above 10 seconds. Which surprisingly shows that I performed just as good on this unique cube than I did on Maddie's GAN12 and Maglev. The next day I tested a cube of the legendary team on Kolasinski. I've made a full video about this cube before where I go in more detail, but the build of this cube is almost identical to Maddie's cube. It is the exact same GAN12M maglev with the same loops, but the only difference between the two is that in Timon's cube the maglev setting is set to 2 instead of 3. The result should be pretty similar to Maddie's cube, although it wasn't for some reason. I had a hard time breaking the cube in. But then suddenly, after just 5 souls, I did something I didn't expect. Oh! A 4 second solve. That is one of the fastest times I've ever had on a cube. But afterwards, my times were pretty bad again. For some reason, I was struggling with the cube. The cube just felt too fast and uncontrollable for my turning style. Which is weird since I remember loving the cube in my last video. Guys, I figured out what happened. So after I edited the video, I realized that Timo's cube should normally be a bit more controllable than Maddie's cube, but that wasn't the case. So I checked the settings and Timo's cube's maglev was set to three clicks instead of five. So the cubicle messed up. And I know what you're thinking, oh, if I buy the cube and it's not set up correctly. But the thing is, I got the cubes in an atypical process. I've got so many custom cubes, they never messed up. So don't worry about that. But anyways, the only fair thing for me to do right now is to do another 100 souls on the right settings and then make my conclusions from those souls. Now, I'm kind of glad this happened because this proved to me that a small change in settings can actually make a big impact. After just a few souls, I got a 6. And then right after that, another one. Another one. Which resulted in a sub-8 average Ooh. of 5. But just as with Maddie's cube, the GAN12M maglev is a hit or miss to me. I got plenty of good souls, but unfortunately, I still overshot a lot since the cube is just too fast for me. Eventually, I got a 9.3 average of 100, a 6.6 .6 single, 7.91 average of 5, 30 souls below 8 seconds, and 32 souls slower than 10 seconds. Which was noticeably faster than my average with the old settings. Or should I say Tyrone's settings? <laughs> Lou Garrett's RS3M Super Ball Core Edition. 
Damn, that's a long name. The RS 3M Super was released last year and has had a pretty positive reception since then. The version Luke uses has a dual adjustment system with maglev, with loose tensions and the compression set to number 7, which is an interesting combo if you ask me. It also has your normal edge corner magnets and a magnetic ball that attracts the magnets in the stems of the corner. But talking about balls, this video is brought to you by... Luke shows Angstrom Dignitas and Cubicle Lab Silk for loops, which both are pretty thick loops. This resulted in a pretty slow, controllable cube out of the box. Or should I say out of the bag? <laughs> I felt right away that this cube would need a lot of souls to break in, but the control of the cube didn't really bother me. Instead, I slowly got better and better with the cube, and since it is a pretty heavy Moyo cube, I knew this cube probably fitted my turning style best out of the cubes I've tried so far. Eventually, I even got a sub-8 average of 5. The Moyu RS 3M Super is a pretty fast cube, but thanks to Luke's setup, the cube gets the control it needs in order to be able to handle it well. That was a weird sentence, but okay. The result is quite an enjoyable cube, but definitely with a focus on performance, since I enjoyed the feel of the other cubes I tried more than this one, to be honest. And then my times got worse, which is probably because I needed a break and not because of the cube, but anyways. Even after 100 souls, I felt the cube needed more break in, and it kind of shows because I didn't have a single good single. No pun intended. And my TPS just didn't get as fast as I hoped it would be. Eventually I got a 9.13 average of 100, a best time of just 7.51, which is surprisingly bad considering my average of 5 of 7.93, 11 sub 8 times and 21 times above 10, 21 savage. featuring my cat's ass. Now I intentionally waited for Max's cube for last, since he uses the same cube I've been using for a long time now, the Tornado V3 flagship edition. It is Chi's latest release and probably the most popular cube of the moment. It is all you need, core magnets, adjustable edge magnets, a dual adjustment system, but this version doesn't have maglev. Probably intentionally from Max, since maglev sometimes makes a cube too fast. Max's settings are both 3 for tension and compression, combine this with the middle magnet strength and you have a pretty balanced cube setup. Max uses his own loops, Max Fleet and Command, combined with DNM37 for speed. So same cube as mine, different setup, resulting in a pretty okay start. But that was about it. I recognized the feel of this cube, but it just didn't perform the same way as I'm used to. There was a lot of friction from the start, which for some reason I just couldn't get rid of. Now don't get me wrong, I performed about average, starting out pretty strong, but I just had more catches on this cube than I had on other cubes. My theory is that I switched from one of the most controllable cubes to a much faster one, and probably also the fact that I've done too many solves that day. I thought this cube would be my favorite, but I ended up with an average of 100 of 9.58, a single of 7.0, an average of 5 of 8.36, only 6 souls below 8 seconds and a whopping 34 souls above 10 seconds. So finally, 600 souls later, I can tell you guys this. Now first off, I want to say that Tommy's cube is the most unique out of all of these cubes and I respect the dude for sticking with something that works for him. I'll definitely be having a lot of fun with this puzzle. Secondly, I think that most cubers will like both Maddie's and Timon's cube the most, since they are the most advanced cubes, super fast, set up in a way that makes them yet controllable. Timon's cube is slightly more controllable, but you'll probably not notice a difference, so just get it from the cuber you like most. Well, you probably like both, so you'll have to ask the bank for a loan and get both? Anyways, thirdly, do you say that? Max's cube kinda underperformed in this video, but that probably has to do with me. The Tornado V3 is an amazing cube and his setup is safe for anyone. Once again, my 100 souls me less than the performance of these guys. And finally, I have to give it to my man Luke for creating a setup that fits me most. The cube is really controllable out of the bag, but I bet that after a lot of souls, it will maintain the control that I feel most setups lose. So you, my dude, are the king of today. And you have an awesome logo. But hold up, I have news, guys crazy news i secretly had cubes in the back your eyes couldn't see yet cubes that might change cubing forever luke has switched to it max probably too will the new moyu ys3m be the next big thing subscribe and you will find out ciao